Good morning everyone. Myself Navyatha Ravi, working as assistant professor in Department of Cyber Security and Data Science in MLR Institute of Technology. Today I am going to discuss about the introduction of database management system. Now we are going to discuss about the levels of abstraction. So what is abstraction? Abstraction is nothing but hiding irrelevant data. Hiding irrelevant data from the set of users. That means a uh, user actually needs to interact with the database. That means he want to communicate with the database in terms of uh, uh, retrieving the data or in terms of updating the data or deleting the data. That's it. But he might not uh, want the implementation details. That is what meant for abstraction. Abstraction is nothing but hiding irrelevant details from the user and providing abstract view of the data to the user which helps in easy and efficient user database interaction. So here we have three levels of abstraction that is physical level abstraction, logical level abstraction and view level abstraction. Here we have three levels of abstraction. View level, view level is nothing but the topmost level, highest level. View level is nothing but the topmost highest level and logical level is the middle level and physical level is the lower level. This will be represented in a diagrammatic representation like this. See here, physical level, logical level, view level. View level is nothing but the topmost level, middle level and physical level, the lowest level. So, this lowest level, lowest level, that means the inner level, this deals with how the data is stored actually in the database. The physical level deals with how the data is stored. That means uh, we used to store the data in some data structures. So what kind of data structures that we are using? What kind of data structures that we are using? So this will be dealt in physical level. So what are the data structures are used to store? That will be dealt in physical level. And what logical level meant for? Logical level describes that what data is stored in the database and the relations among data. What kind of data? That means the data is stored in table format and if at all in tables format, uh, if at all the data stored in this tables format, that data is nothing but the relational data. This data is called as what? The relational data. Relational data is nothing but the data which is in the form of tables, that is in the form of rows and columns and the relationships among these data. This will be maintained by logical level. And what is view level? View level is nothing but it describes the user interaction with the database to the system. So, view level deals with just the interaction with the database. It does not deals with the implementation details. User may not know the implementation details, how the database will be uh, implemented and what data structure we use to to store the data and how we used to store the data that is irrelevant to the user. That is what the abstraction meant for. Abstraction is nothing but hiding irrelevant details from the user. So, these are the three levels of abstraction. Next, what is data independence? Before going to know about the data independence, we need to know about two terminologies. What are those two terminologies here? What that is nothing but database instance and the second one is database schema. So, what is instance, database instance? Storing a data in that particular moment of time, storing some particular, some volumes of data. For example, storing 100 records, storing 100 records at this moment. So, this moment I am storing, if at all I want to store 100 records, then what is that? That is called as instance, database instance. So, the data stored in the database at that particular moment of time. What is schema? Schema is nothing but the design, the design of a database is nothing but the diagrammatic representation of a database. So, here design of a database is called schema. It is only the structural view of a database. It is only the structural view of a database. That is what we schema is meant for. So, before going to know about independence, data independence, we, we need to know about schema. So, let us discuss the schema here. For example, This is the student entity, this is the course entity. In this student course, for example, I used to maintain student database and course database. I, I used to interrelate with each other. First of all, I need to have a blueprint that is nothing but a data, database design. 
if at all in real terms in real world if at all we used to construct a house uh, we can't go to the site and we can't directly construct uh, uh, get down the raw materials and we we can't uh, start the construction right first of all to construct a house or to build a house we need we need to have some blueprint the design where it need to be how many bedrooms need to be built where where they can be placed and where is the kitchen living room so this can be uh, uh, compulsory we have to maintain a blueprint this should be maintained in the same manner if at all we used to main, uh, we used to develop a software or we used to develop a database we must have that blueprint that is what we call as schema the designing of a database so here designing of a database includes if at all uh, i used to store the student uh, data and course data so in student data i used to uh, represent what student id student name and if at all in course data i used to represent course id and course name i used to relate these two so in my database in student database i want this design the student which contains these attributes and the course that contains these attributes which are interrelated with each other this is what a small design this is what we called as schema design of a database so what is let us discuss about uh, uh, data independence data independence the ability to modify the schema definition at one level of the database without altering or affecting the schema definition at next higher level that is what data independence let us discuss this one with an example so here we have three levels three levels right what is those three levels physical level logical level and view level these are the three levels physical level logical level view level physical level is deals with how the data is stored as we have discussed in the previous slides physical level deals with how data is stored logical level deals with what data is stored and the relations among those data and view level deals with view level deals with the user interaction to the database so here we have three levels so if at all i used to change the design here i used to change the design here and it must not reflect the next higher levels that is what we call as data independence if at all i used to change any modifications i have to do i have to do any modifications in this level in physical level then it must not reflect the next higher levels that is what data independence is meant for so here we have two levels of independence physical data independence and logical data independence what is physical data independence changing the physical schema without causing a change in next higher levels this is physical data independence and this is logical data independence so here changing the physical schema physical data as we all said the physical data is meant for storing purpose right if at all i used to store the data in a particular data structure right so if at all here my data is in in this disk if at all i used to change i used to change my data i used to shift my data to another storage device to another storage device then is there any effect to the next higher level no right so just i am i am shifting my data to the next uh, device the same data to the next device without affecting i am doing here updation i am doing here updation so that is called as physical data independence and what is logical data independence so here if at all my data is in the form of tables for example here this is my data which consists of sid name and mobile number sid name and mobile number here i need to add this is already the data which has been existed sid one name some xyz mobile number some 94123 of course we have 10 digits right so here to abc Six seven four three two. So this is my already existing data in this level. So if at all I used to add one more column here, one more column that is nothing but state. If at all I used to add one more column for the existing data, then will they there uh, they may not be it must not be affected the next higher level, right? So here view level that means user 
can view already existing data and he can also view that the newly added data also. What I have done here, I have modified already existing data without affecting the next higher level. That is what the thing. That is what actually data independence is meant for. Updating the already existing data without affecting the its next higher levels. So, now let us de deal with database system architecture. So, how this database uh, architecture will be. Here we have uh, uh, three types of architecture. Single tier architecture, two tier architecture and three tier architecture. Here single tier architecture can, can be also called as one tier architecture. Here the database, client, server can be in a single system, single device. So, if at all the client, server and the database, client, server and the database resides in a single system that is what we called as one tier, single tier architecture. So, let us see what is single tier architecture, the local database and application, whatever the thing. So, will be in a single device. So, in one tier architecture, the database, user interface and the application logic all resides on a same machine or a server. So, what is two tier architecture? So, in two tier architecture, the name itself, we have two levels that is nothing but the client and the server. So, here the client side, the client side application program will in, will interact with the database directly, will communicate with the database directly. So, that is what two tier architecture. So, two tier architecture is same as the basic client server. In two tier architecture, applications on the client end can directly communicate with the database at the server side. So, applications at client end can directly communicate with the database. But here the security is uh, somewhat uh, less when compared to three tier. Why? Because the user side application will directly communicate with the database. So, here the security might be less. So, let us deal with three tier architecture. So, it is just like two tier architecture. Here one more level will be added to ensure the security purpose, right. So, here the user side client application client will not directly communicate with the server, right, will not directly communicate. So, it will communicate with the application server at the server end and later on uh, the data will be retrieved from the database. So, there is no direct communication to the database to provide more security. So, nowadays the databases are built by using this three tier architecture. So, the three tier architecture contains another layer between client and server that is nothing but this one application server. So, in this architecture client can't directly communicate with the server. The application on client end interacts with the application server which further communicates with the database system. So, here Nowadays, we the database management systems built by using three tier architecture. So, now let us discuss about the structure of DBMS in a brief manner. So, for the first level here we have uh, uh, four levels. Here we have four levels. So, in short, in short term, I will tell you have to remember this diagram. As uh, if at all we used to see this diagram, it will be very complex, right? But if at all I explain, then it will be very easy to remember also. The first phase here represents the types of users. The first phase here represents the types of users, naive users, application programs, programmers, sophisticated users, database administrator. So, naive users interact with the database. These, these type of users interact with the database by using already written program. Right. Application programmers. Application programmers used to write complex application programs. Sophisticated users. These are the kind of users use some query tools to interact with the database or else some query languages to interact with the database. And database administrator, he is the one person who is responsible for whole and sole responsibility of maintaining a database. Database administrator, he used to give the permissions to interact with the database for all the users, right? So, the first level deals with the types of users and these users interact with this database by using the second level. What are these? Nothing but just like APS, application programming interfaces. So, the viewers directly may not uh, communicate with the database by using APIs or else some query languages, some query tools. We used to interact with the database that deals with the second level. 
So here the second level deals with application programs, application programming interfaces, query tools and, and some of the uh, database about schema. Next, the third thing represents query processor. So here in this query processor, what is meant by query? As I said you earlier, query is nothing but the question which is asked to the database. The user will ask a question to the database. So here this question will be done here. That means the compiled here by using some tools. And if at all our question is correct, then it will be forwarded to the storage manager. So in the next section, let us discuss in detail with the structure of DBMS and what are the levels in this structure and the design of DBMS. Thank you.